we have left. We'll hear from you. Call on the lines. Uh, you may have to wait a little bit, but uh, we'll take as many of those calls in those 50 minutes. But we're joined by another opinionist. This is Dean Obadala of Sirius XM. He's host of the Dean Obadala Show, joining us via Skype from New York. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Pedro. Thanks for having me on. You bill yourself as the first Muslim American to host a nationwide talk show. Could you tell us how you got to that point? Well, actually, the normal route. I mean, getting involved on radio, being on Sirius XM as a guest, then guest hosting, then getting hired, and also working in writing for Daily Beast. I write for CNN.com and other places. And I was just really appreciative that Sirius XM would give me a chance to share my point of view with people. I mean, I begin my show saying to people, I want to be your Muslim friend, because polls show most Americans don't know a Muslim, but those Americans who do know a Muslim have a more positive view of Muslims. So we're about 2% of the country. I wish I could sign everybody a Muslim friend, but we're too small of a community to do that. But through the media, we can talk to people. We can answer questions. We can have conversations. People get to know us, and we're no longer the caricature you see in the media, but we're human beings. We're fellow Americans. So I'm greatly appreciative of having this opportunity on Sirius XM to have my show, Talk about all issues of the day. It's not a religious show in any stretch. It's about news of the day, politics of the day, especially progressive politics of the day. So from the, the point of view you take and the, the, the point of view you come from as a Muslim American, how do you view the direction of the country? I think it depends on your metric for this, on, on what's good or bad. But overall, I have never been more optimistic about the direction of this country. And I don't say that because of Donald Trump, I say that in spite of Donald Trump, because of this amazing activism we are seeing now that I think so many Americans were asleep before, even those on the left and in the center. I think Donald Trump has woken you up to the stakes and the consequences of not voting. When 40% of Americans didn't vote on election day, they got Donald Trump as president. Now you see the Women's March, you see these young, great activists from Parkland, Florida and across the country now who are standing up and saying enough is enough. We're not gonna have politics of old and that's really in the essence what it's about. Politics of old is not going to be acceptable. And you see poll after poll showing Americans that double the amount strongly disapprove of Donald Trump than approve because people know the stakes now. So I look at November 6, 2018. It's not just election day. I say it's judgment day for this country. And I think for those who don't want Donald Trump as president, don't want this Republican administration, public control of both chambers of Congress, on one day, they want to take your health care away. The next, they vote for massive deficits. This is your day to come out. And I've never been more optimistic that people are getting more engaged. They're getting active. They care about the country more than ever. I think it's made many of us realize how much deeply we love this nation. So I'm optimistic that I think things are going the right direction in that metric that we're getting engaged. And come November 6, 2018, I think you're going to see a big wave of voters making their voice heard. And I think the result will be the Republicans swept out of the House, maybe the Senate, countless governorships and state legislatures. Uh, Mr. Obadala, to that point, you wrote a piece for NBC about the 2018 elections, the Democratic Party, and this idea of purity test when it comes to progressive issues. Can, for those who haven't read it, make the case for us? Sure. Well, last year, short time after the election, on my radio show, on the, on the Progressive Channel on Sirius XM, there was still this... Hillary Bernie fight going on. That's so oversimplifying it, but that was in essence what was going on. Right through the middle of last year, I kept hearing it over and over. I was trying to heal it. I realized I'm making it worse by talking about it at this point. Well, flash forward to later last year, we saw the election in Virginia first with Ralph Northam, who said definitely center left, but not the most progressive guy. They were the, the most progressive Democrats you ever heard of in your life saying we're supporting Ralph Northam, we want a Democrat and, and voting for Democratic candidates for a state, the House of Delegates there. We saw the same thing with Roy Moore election with Doug Jones in Alabama. Doug Jones was more of a centrist on certain issues. Progressive Democrats didn't care. Now we have the election in Pennsylvania with a Democrat there who was arguably centrist on certain issues. Progressives who used to be who are still Bernie supporters and very left called my show and said, you know what? If you got a D after your name, I'm voting for you. So now progressive purity has been replaced by progressive pragmatism. And for 2018, that is the formula for success. It's sort of a, a page from Republicans who would have their fights, but then put aside sort of their purity tests when they get to a general election. I think we're going to stand 2018. And again, Donald Trump is making the Democratic Party great again by unifying us. And enthousi enthusiasm, I've never heard. It is unreal, off the charts. People would love to vote today for the midterms.
Uh, did you see that play out then also in Pennsylvania 18 with the election of Connor Lamb? And is that a, a case in point for you, even though he came across as a moderate on some things? Certainly. And, and that really was, I mean, Connor Lamb ran, ran an ad criticizing Nancy Pelosi and saying, I'm not going to support Nancy Pelosi. You imagine a Republican running an ad against Donald Trump trying to win in that district. I'm sure some Republicans would have been turned off. But no, it's pragmatism. Democrats there, even the most progressive from MoveOn.org, the members there, demanded that they support Connor Lamb. And I know that because I had Corinne Jean-Pierre on my show, a spokesman from MoveOn.org, who said they listened to the grassroots. I think now you're seeing an awakening of the grassroots on the left that we haven't seen before. And, and I think sometimes you, the media elites, and I, you know, I hate to put it in a pejorative sense, but I mean the, the people you see on, on some of the cable news networks who will say Democratic base think this or that, Ask them when the last time they talked to the Democratic base. I, I have the honor of speaking to them night after night. And, and the same goes true on the right. I listen to so many. I listen to the Patriot Channel sometimes, the conservative mirror of my show, and listen to the Republican base. And it's interesting to hear what real grassroots people are talking about. I think that would be so much better if our media would listen to the grassroots on both sides more than having these, these pundits come on and say what the base is thinking. Uh, Mr. Obadala, to matters of foreign policy, your sense of the incoming uh, national security advisor, John Bolton, the next head of the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. I think they're they're really, if you want a war with Iran, you're going to love these two. I mean, if you like the Iraq war, wait to the sequel. These guys are perfect for that, especially John Bolton, a man who to this day defends the Iraq war as being a good decision. And also, let me add that they're being Muslim American, I'm certainly in tune to those who have spewed anti-Muslim bigotry. You have Mike Pompeo, what a con contrast to Rex Tillerson who advocated, let's have more understanding between the Muslim world and the West and hoping we can have some understanding and find common ground. Mike Pompeo is a man who has been celebrated by the biggest anti-Muslim groups in America. And these are groups, the Anti-Defamation League, and the Southern Poverty Law Center says anti have been the biggest anti-Muslim groups like Act for America. He literally got an award from them. To us, uh, the Muslim community, that's getting an award from the Klan. He actually reserved a room for them on Capitol Hill to spew their anti-Muslim bigotry, such as the idea that if you are a practicing Muslim, you cannot be a loyal American. That's literally what the head of the organization, Bridget Gabriel, has said. The thing with John Bolton also is buddied up with Pamela Geller, another one of the leading anti-Muslim bigots in this country, and Frank Gaffney. So, we're troubled with that. We're also troubled with their great idea of advocating an end to diplomacy with Iran. You know, if we're committed to not having Iran get nuclear weapons, the three options are sanctions, there's diplomacy like the Iran deal, or there's war. And it seems that these two, the first two are gone. And we're heading towards a drumbeat to potentially war. And I hope Americans on the left and the right pay very close attention to the words of John Bolton, of Mike Pompeo. I hope Pompeo doesn't get confirmed. Bolton doesn't need to be confirmed. But be very aware. Let's not do a replay of 2003 again now, 2018. Uh, Mr. Obadala, uh, your show airs when and what will you be talking about today? My, my show airs 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Sirius XM Progress Channel. It's channel 127. Tonight we'll talk about the issues of, of news from the day. We'll talk about Stefan Clark shooting in Sacramento more after the funeral. We'll talk about... Donald Trump praising Roseanne Barr, which they're a perfect fit for each other because Roseanne is unfortunately mainstream, some anti-Muslim, some right-wing views, really hateful views, and ABC has given her a pass. So we'll talk about that and more issues of the day tonight on my show. Uh, Dean of Radio is the .com is the website that we have. Are there, is there another site? Is that the correct site? That's at deanofradio.com or on Twitter, at Dean Obidala. If you can spell Obidala, I, I hope you can. Or facebook.com slash Dean of Radio for my show page. Mr. Obidala, thank you for your time. Thank you, Pedro. Back to your calls. Let's go to Carrie in Durham, North Carolina, who says the country's going